do describe the bloated public service very well. They are only short on saying why the bloated public service exists in the counties. In order to deal with the issue of bloated public service of a big wage bill, we must explain why the bloated public service is there. First, I think when counties were created by the, by the Constitution of 2010, and then when Parliament, both the Senate and the National Assembly, passed legislation as was prescribed in Schedule 5 to implement the new Constitution, one of the institutions that was established was called the Transition Authority. The Transition Authority was supposed to deal with issues of assets and liabilities in the counties. And one of the liabilities the Transition Authority did not address was the issue of the bloated public service in the counties. They left without dealing with that issue. And what had happened that when the counties were, in, uh, were created, the county government inherited the personnel, both in the local government as they existed then, and the personnel the national government left behind in line with the schedule four of the constitution. Now, of course, the treasury on its turn in um, allocating money during the divisional revenue bill has never taken attention, paid attention to this phenomenon. Money has been given to the counties as if they are handling a normal public service. I would like to ask the government to look at one important thing. One, that the downsizing of this bloated public service is not a function of the counties only. It must go to the original sin. One, the national government who left bloated public service behind, the local government who had already bloated public service, and this issue, I think we should look at it as a matter of policy and come out with a solution. Otherwise, it's never going to be solved by the Division of Revenue Bill from year to year. And then after every year, lamentation from the Auditor General as well as the control of budget about it, those lamentations will not provide solutions. There must be a solution based on explanation of why that road is public services. Is. I suggest the following. Let us implement contract terms in both the national government and the county government and run away from these permanent and pensionable terms. It is also the source of the problem we are dealing with. Secondly, the government should then come with a policy in the budget of giving a golden heart shake to those who can choose to retire to reduce the size of the public service. That's one. The second issue, a matter arising from my time as a year and a half in government, the issue of land. I'll give you a practical example. A donor has decided that they are going to give us money in a sub-county hospital called Kombewa to put up a children's hospital. In the sub-county hospital of Kombewa, there's land next door, which apparently belongs to the Ministry of Public Works, the old Ministry of Public Works. I didn't know this. So we assumed it was ours. <laughs> we made arrangement to use it, and then we got a very harsh letter from the parent ministry. That is national government land. Although in Schedule 4 of the Constitution, the land is also given to counties as responsibility. But land is used by both the national and county government. Where a, a county government has real need of that land. I think there should also be a possibility of swapping land or that land being surrendered because of need. The national government has not used that land for the last 15 years. Now that we want to use it, they have risen as owners. And indeed, according to the National Land Commission and the Ministry of Lands, they are actually the, the original owners of this land, but they owned it before devolution. This is another issue, access to land for uh, county governments, which I think the lawmakers like yourself should look into. The third thing that I want to say very quickly is the issue of investments. Now, Schedule 4 of the Constitution gives us a lot of responsibilities, water, agriculture, environment, you name it. The national government has ministries which get a lot of money to invest in those aspects of Schedule 4 where there is responsibility given to the national government. 
with the county governments, except for money given in the Division of Revenue Bill, which ends up paying that bloated public service immensely, there's very little money left for investment. Then we should be kind of ingenious. I suggest that with regard to the relationship with county governments and the private sector, that we come up le with legislation or policy, both at the county level and national level, that can help us establish what we call special, pu special purpose vehicles, where the private sector and others can put in money in ourselves, because we don't have enough money by ourselves to invest, to make possible investment in those areas of responsibility we have been given in Schedule 4 of the Constitution. The fourth thing I wanted to mention is the government has taken a very progressive step of establishing uh, technical and vocational training centers in constituencies. Very good move. The most important thing now to look is how we use uh, products of the technical and vocational training centers in the economies of the county. Because I do believe that these centers are the vital elements of igniting development and economies in these counties. But the, they have been established the national government but a proper framework has not been laid to make sure that the kind of personnel trained will go to boost the economies of the counties to fulfill its mandate in Schedule 4 of the Constitution. The first thing is roads. I do not understand that if roads in counties are responsibility for counties, that we still have a body called CARA, Kenya Rural Roads Authority. I thought rural roads are rural. They are where counties are. I don't understand why the national government still concerns itself with dealing with rural roads. What other roads can the counties deal with? Because the national government has Kenha, which is national, and so on and so on. So I think the issue of CARA, CARA as an institution, I think should be abolished. And that money taken to counties. And the physics thing I wanted to talk about. You know, if you go to the United States of America, you'll find that every state, state of Illinois, state of New York, state of Oklahoma, the state of Colorado, every state has a state university. This was done very deliberately by Americans so that states can act as centers of research. Universities can act as centers of research for states and produce manpower and help states grow. Unfortunately, in Kenya, we don't have county university of Kisumu at Ahero, for example. I think we should think of that very seriously. We don't need to create universities, but Public universities like Maseno can easily be designated at County University of Kisumu at Maseno. Unfortunately, we have started working with Maseno very closely, and I think we can pursue that idea to be, to be cascaded to other counties. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, just want to welcome you to Afri Cities in November 2021. It's a big thing for us. It's a big thing for you. We want to begin preparing for, for it very early. I am quite sure that you have seen signs that we are ready for our facilities. One of them is here. The other one is the 24-hour economy in Condele, which I invite you to. Many things happen there. Avoid the others. Use some. And then, Buena <laughs> Yesu And then, of course, the Tilapia Beach is fantastic. Luangli Beach, all the fish that, here we don't talk about fish. We call it fish. Thank you very much. Ah, sorry, I forgot. And now, it's really my humble responsibility to call my friend Eugene Wamala, the PS for devolution. A CS with, with whom we work very closely. Uh, we have worked very closely in preparing for after cities. And he's always welcome to Kisumu, um, and always welcome in his office. In fact, we have a joint committee from Kisumu County and the CSS office preferring for this opportunity. Yes, Karibu. Uh, thank you very much, our gracious host, uh, Governor Professor Peter Nyongo, the Right Honorable Kenneth Lusaka, Speaker of the Senate, the Majority Leader, my good friend Murkomen, the Minority Leader, uh, Senator James Orengo, uh, the Registrar of the High Court, uh, Anna my dear, I think we were together on the same flight. Sorry for the delay. We were never to get here much earlier with your team. And uh, we have uh, representatives of our independent commissions who are all here. 
uh, the honorable senators uh, present, uh, honorable members of our county assemblies, members of parliament who are here, uh, speakers of uh, our county assemblies. Uh, we also have our deputy governors, my good friend DG Kisumu, I saw him somewhere, and we have uh, the DG Taita Taveta. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon.